intensive care. Um, today, we added um, new information to our website, including the list of congregate care facilities with outbreaks. I want to be very clear that the definition that we use for outbreak means that if there is one resident or one staff person or one contractor who visited the facility and was a COVID-19 case, that that constitutes an outbreak. So I want to be very clear that we have a very low threshold um, in our definition of outbreak and in our um, extensive response of these facilities. I also would say that given this unprecedented level of data sharing, we want to make sure that you are um, careful and fair in your um, use of the data. It's a pretty complex <coughs> data set, and there are many Raven, stop. nuances. So um, I just want to acknowledge that as, as that data is new on our website. The information, the new information is included in the situation update section yes. of the website, and we will continue to provide additional information there. I did want yes. to comment a bit on um, our conversations about um, wearing cloth masks. The federal yes. government has issued some new guidance on this, but um, I wanted to make a few points of clarification. First of all, um, we want to be very clear that individuals who are sick should be staying home and isolating themselves. Um, a mask is, is not intended to um, be an excuse to be out in the world. Um, and could I ask people to put their phones on mute because I can hear the wind blowing? Um, so first of all, individuals who are sick should be staying home and isolating. Um, masking does not change that recommendation. Um, secondly, we want to make sure that people are clear that the, the goal of masks is to help prevent your germs, the wearer of the mask, from infecting others. Your mask protects the person that is, you know, across from you, not you. And the person across from you who's wearing a mask, their mask would be protecting you. But masks are really just a secondary protection, sort of a belt and suspenders approach. The primary protective measures yes. um, for preventing COVID remain hand washing, covering your cough, social distancing, and of course, staying home if you're sick. Yes even if it's a beautiful Easy. weekend in Minnesota. Easy. And then we want to um, say again and again, don't buy or wear surgical or N95 masks. Um, if you do choose to wear a mask, do not use medical yes. grade or surgical masks. These supplies are in high need in healthcare facilities yes. and should be used to protect healthcare workers. And with that, I'll turn it back to Mike and we can open it up for questions. Operator, I think we're ready to open yes. it up for questions on the line. As a reminder to ask a question, you will need to press the star 1 on your telephone. Yes. To draw your question, please press the pound key. Our first question comes from Dave Oric of Pioneer Air Blast. Your line is open. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, first thing I just want to say is I asked a question yes. yesterday and I kind of fungled the wording and uh, it was offensive to some people and I apologize about that. Um, Chris, I don't know if you can answer this question, but we currently have in Minnesota collectively at the moment an excess yes. supply of ventilators. New York City is short ventilators. Has there been any yes. discussion of potentially loaning some ventilators to New York? Um, right, I yes. cannot answer that question, but um, as Mike indicated, we will check with the team that's working on that particular area and we can get back to you. Okay, thank you. That's all I have today. Our next question comes from Walker Orenstein of Mid Post. Your line is open. Yes. Hi, all. Um, with the new data on um, the rate 
racial breakdown of COVID cases. Can you tell us a little bit about what, if any, conclusions we can and should draw from that, um, or if sort of like the accessibility of testing or other issues could be um, a factor? Just talk a little bit about that data and um, what you all are learning from it. Yes. Um, well, certainly, certainly we know that um, accessibility for testing has been an issue, and we know that in particular the southern part of the state has had more access to testing because um, of the availability of testing through Mayo. And so um, that means that some of the data will be skewed to the um, demographics of, of that part of the state. So I, I think that I think that that is, you know, a, a big part of what we're seeing. We're working um, to get testing to other parts of the state, including our tribal um, nations. And so I think we should start to see some um, changes in those demographics. And, and just a real quick follow-up, I noticed that some of the data appears to be different on the public dashboard than in the, the normal Department of Health page, mm -hmm. for example, I think it says like 81.55% of cases are Caucasian versus on the, the main Department of Health page says 74%. Um, yes. I don't know if you all know offhand why that would be different, but just thought I'd ask. Yes. Oh, no, they're actually getting data from us, so we will check on that. Okay, thank you. That's all for me. Our next question yes. comes from Elizabeth Dunbar of NPR News, Carolina Hilton. Hi, Kristen. Just wondering um, on, you know, the number of cases that we saw today, the increase. Yes. It looked like it was a bigger increase than we're seeing day to day. I'm wondering if there's anything to say about that. Yes. Um, well, certainly the number of cases that we get are all based on um, yes. the testing that's done at laboratories, um, and now more than ever, laboratories outside of the public health lab. Yes. And so, as some of the commercial labs are working their way through their backlog, yes. we can expect to see um, more cases. The other thing is yes. that our testing has nice been job. Well more targeted, Take a break from there. and so that means that 